Hi, my name is Ben Greenbaum. I'm with Cisco's Advanced Threat Solutions Group, and I'm here to talk to you today about Cisco Threat Response, Cisco's exciting new integration platform that ties together our entire security portfolio. The problem that Cisco Threat Response is designed to solve is one of too many tools. Analysts have a staggering array of tools and interfaces that are used in the course of answering even the most simple questions that come across their desk. We have different sources of internal data to deal with, like our endpoint logs, edge device logs, email security gateway logs, web proxy logs, perhaps a SIM. We have external enrichment sources that we use on a daily basis, like information from our threat intelligence vendors, our reputation lookups, vendor and government alerts, information coming from sharing groups to which we might belong. The Cisco integrated security architecture helps bring all of this together. All of it is underpinned by Talos. Cisco's Global Threat Intelligence Organization. Then we have enforcement capabilities at the network, the endpoints, and the cloud layers. And we have threat management capabilities that allow us to deploy quickly, detect threats, investigate and remediate those threats, and update our policies as needed. All of this is API-driven, and therefore all of it can tie into third-party tools and offerings as well. Customers then have a single location to consume intelligence across all of our products or through any of our products. We increase operational efficiency by reducing your detection and remediation time as a result. We increase security efficacy by bringing the power of Talos to every security operations center. And we are able to demonstrate the power of Cisco's integrated security portfolio. Cisco Threat Response is the key pillar of this integrated security architecture. Cisco Threat Response is the portal, the window or the lens, if you will, into this unified data set and into these unified response actions. It allows you to aggregate and correlate security incidents, whether they happen at the network, at the endpoint, or in the cloud, or any combination thereof. It simplifies your investigations and automates them to an extent that allows you to remediate much, much faster at all of these levels. How does this work? Cisco Threat Response has a modular design. Cisco Threat Response has modules that plug into it that can be configured by the user to talk to their different data sources, including global threat intelligence, local security context provided by your monitoring tools, and enforcement via modules that talk to the different control devices that you have deployed as well. And of course, some modules will offer two or more of these capabilities. So what does this look like in practice? Let's go through a very short investigation and see how this all works. Every investigation starts with a question of some kind from some piece of information that you have received. What is this thing? Is it bad? Why is it bad? Has it affected us? And if so, in what way? Let's have a look at the Talos blog article on Olympic Destroyer. And here in the blog article, we see that there is a wealth of information about how the malware works, the specific steps that it takes during the infection process. And at the very end of the blog article, we see a list of indicators of compromise, or IOCs. Now those IOCs, also known as observables, are identifiable. So we have the file hashes for different parts of the malware. And we're going to grab all of those. We're simply going to copy them and then we're going to go to Cisco Threat Response, and right here where it says paste, we're just going to paste them the way we got them. We don't have to do any formatting, we don't have to remove any characters that aren't the observables themselves, just paste it in and click investigate. What you see happening now is Cisco Threat Response using all of the modules that are configured in order to do these lookups and asking each one of those data sources, what do you know about this thing? What do you know about this file hash? What do you know about that file hash? And you can see that we've done our 10 enrichments now and the 10 observables that were included in the material that we copied. And we can also see most importantly and immediately these two purple icons here. These mean that one of our systems has seen one of the items that we asked about. So we can see that this specific file here which we can also see as malicious because it's coded red, is something that two of our endpoints have interacted with. Now, this is information coming in from AMP for endpoints. We've got information coming in from multiple sources. Right here, you can see the file that our systems have encountered. Over on the right-hand side, if we select that file, you can see the timeline of when these sightings were made, and you can see the different data sources that have contributed to us knowing that this file is malicious. You see that AMP file reputation is aware of this file and knows that it's malicious. Then you see multiple judgments from VirusTotal as well. 
Interesting point, Virus Total is in no way a Cisco property. That is a third party tool. But because we have a module that can speak to Virus Total's public API, if you have an API key, you can give that key to the module configuration for Virus Total, and we will deal with the Virus Total API on your behalf. This is the power of Cisco Threat Response, bringing all of this information together and presenting it to you in a simple, intuitive, easy to navigate graphical format that gives you a high level view of the relationships between the different items, whether or not those items have been seen in your network, and an easy way to pivot to get more detailed information should you require it. In this case, we've seen that two of our machines saw the file, and we can go to the Sightings tab in the Cisco Threat Response interface and immediately see that we've got quarantine events here. So these files were seen on our endpoints, but they were quarantined. In less than two minutes, we find out that our systems did see this threat, but that our existing security technologies protected us from it. That's an example of what it looks like when you use Cisco Threat Response to do an investigation on information that you got from an outside source like a website. However, part of the power of the integrated architecture is the way that you can pivot into Cisco Threat Response from integrated Cisco tools. To see an example of that, let's go to AMP for Endpoints. Anywhere in the AMP for Endpoints interface where you see an observable, whether that's a file hash, an IP address, or anything else, you're going to see this pivot menu icon. If you click that, you get a list of actions you can take that are largely driven by Cisco Threat Response. Up top, immediately, you see a verdict has been rendered on this file that says that it's malicious, and you see why. Further down, you see that you can add this to a casebook. We'll talk more about casebooks later. Take various actions on it through Threat Grid or Umbrella modules in Cisco Threat Response. And the very bottom item is to simply investigate this in visibility. Now, Cisco Threat Response was initially named visibility, and we changed the name to Cisco Threat Response to more accurately reflect what it can offer to you. But anywhere that you do see Cisco visibility, just know that what it means is Cisco Threat Response. Let's click this and find out what Cisco Threat Response tells us about it. And here in Cisco Threat Response, we see the file in the middle of the graph space and the lookups are beginning to be done. And the lookups are already done and we can see, yes, that one of our machines has seen this file. We already knew that. But we also see the IP addresses that have been involved in that file's execution and citing. We see a URL that we weren't uh, previously aware of. We see another file. All of this information coming to us quickly in this graph, regardless of what data source the information was actually provided via. Now we can add this other file that we didn't know about a minute ago to the investigation by simply click clicking on it and add to investigation. And now we see some additional information about this secondary file. We also have its file path and file names that it's been seen by in addition to those of the file that we were already investigating. For some response actions, things that we could do here would be to add this file to a custom detection list in AMP for endpoints, blocking the file across all of our endpoints and any other AMP Unity enabled AMP devices. This file is already known as malicious, so that's not necessarily in this case, but that is something that you could do on any file that you see in the interface. We have this URL that came back. This is a suspicious URL, and a response action that we can take here is to immediately block this domain that the URL is hosted at across our entire environment by using the umbrella Cisco DNS security product and adding it to our block list there. Done. Two clicks protected enterprise-wide from this entire domain. Over in the details section, we can also see under the sightings tab when this file has been seen in our environment. We can pivot back into AMP to look at the device trajectory of the device on which it was seen, showing the chain of events that led to this detection. So that's what it looks like pivoting from AMP for endpoints into Cisco Threat Response and then back out to AMP for endpoints. Of course, we can do this from other Cisco products as well. Let's take a look at Threat Grid and what integration opportunities it affords us. What we're looking at here is an analysis result, the output, the report of what was discovered about a sample that was submitted. We see at the top left this threat score. This is determined by threat grid based on the behavior indicators that were triggered in the course of the analysis. Everything else on this row is because of the integration with Cisco Threat Response. We can see that none of my systems have seen this file directly. We can see that there were 54 judgments against this file, a total of three verdicts made, nine indicators triggered, and all of this data comes from five sources. Throughout this analysis report, much like in the AMP for Endpoints interface, anywhere that you see an observable, you will have a pivot menu that allows you to take Cisco Threat Response-driven actions. So here are some URLs. 
We open the pivot menu and we can take the modular actions uh, similar to what was shown in AMP for endpoints. We can also add it to a new casebook. Now, last time I said that we would talk about casebooks later, this is later, and we're going to add this URL to a new casebook. You see the little pop-up on the bottom right there saying that it's been successfully added to the casebook. We can take this next URL, and instead of adding it to a new casebook, we'll just add it to the current casebook, and so on. We can continue to find these bits of information here that we want to add to our casebook. We don't even have to click the menu. We can just hit this drag icon and bring it over to the casebook's widget and just say, add to this casebook. Now that we've got some things added to the casebook, let's look at the casebook's widget once we open it up. We can first off give this a name that means something to us. We can add a description if we want to. We can add additional observables by pasting or typing them into this space, and we can type in some notes if we have notes as we investigate this case. These can be passed back and forth between users in the same organization as well, so that we can share information at shift change or if somebody goes on holidays, etc. Casebooks, even though it's hosted here in the Threat Grid UI in our example, casebooks are a Cisco threat response feature. Now, casebooks can be shared between members of your organization, which makes it very easy to pass your notes on an investigation between teammates in the events of shift changes or somebody going on vacation, etc. Casebooks are entirely hosted in Cisco Threat Response. They're made available via UI widgets in other products, but the data and the API all lives in Cisco Threat Response, which means that these can be passed not just between members of your team, but between products as well. First, Let's click on the investigate link in the casebooks widget and see what Cisco Threat Response has to say about these three items. And here again, we see Cisco Threat Response doing the lookups on these three items and showing you everything that we're aware of associated with them, including a large number of additional files that are unknown and that therefore we might want to investigate further if we see any of them in our environments. In this case, because there are no purple icons, it looks like we haven't actually seen any of them in our environment, which is great news. But the next thing that I want to show you is we're going to log into AMP for Endpoints and check something quickly. Back in AMP for Endpoints, you see the casebook widget here in the bottom right, just like it was in ThreatGrid. We'll open that up, and here's our casebook. Demo video casebook, here's the same information available. We could continue this investigation here in AMP for Endpoints and add additional items to this same casebook, even though it's something that we started in ThreatGrid. And these cases can follow you around from product to product, and at any point you can pivot directly back into Cisco Threat Response to continue the investigation with the latest information that you have added. Another quick couple of things that I would like to show you about the Cisco Threat Response interface. Here you see a button for snapshots. Snapshots are simply moments in time encapsulations of the state of an investigation at a given time. You can save these, they can also be passed between members of your team. And the other thing is the help. Over here on the right, you have this help icon. Threat Response has an extensive documentation section, and you will find additional information about every feature and every piece of terminology used in the interface here. And finally, modules. These first four modules come by default with any Cisco Threat Response account. You don't need to edit them, and they simply work straight out of the box for you, including bringing things like AMP's entire file reputation database and the Talos Intelligence database to your fingertips. Below that, we have modules for AMP for Endpoints, Umbrella, ThreatGrid, and virus total. Each of these bringing their own distinct capabilities, both in terms of threat intelligence, local context, and enforcement capabilities to your Cisco Threat Response account. In summary, Cisco Threat Response reduces the complexity of your growing incident response tool set. Saves you time in an incident response when you need it most. You can use Cisco Threat Response to quickly research and react to involving security threats across a broad and diverse tool set. We bring together your external threat intelligence and your internal log data, combining data from multiple Cisco and third-party sources. It becomes a single pane of glass for those most common incident response functions across multiple tools, with use cases, frankly, before, during, and after an attack to help you reduce investigation, triage, and mitigation time. And best of all, Cisco Threat Response is free with purchase of qualifying product. If you have 
and for endpoints or threat grid or umbrella, you can be using Cisco Threat Response today. We put this out there to allow you to make more effective use of the Cisco security investments you've already made. For more information about Cisco Threat Response, talk to your Cisco account rep. Thank you very much.